Hey, I'm Rob Witcher, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to the OSI model in Domain 4 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the first of four videos for Domain 4. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Ah, Domain 4, Communications and Network Security. The domain that gives the most people a migraine when preparing for the CISSP exam. You certainly don't need to be a networking expert to pass the CISSP exam, but you do need to understand some of the fundamentals. And this makes sense. Our modern day systems are vastly interconnected through a spider's web of different networking technologies. If we ever hope to secure our systems as security professionals, then it is important for us to understand the fundamentals of networking. Let's dive in, shall we? We are going to begin our whirlwind review of Domain 4 with the OSI model, the Open Systems Interconnection Model. The first very important thing to understand about the OSI model is that it is a model, a guide, a conceptual framework, which is meant to help standardize how systems should communicate with each other. The key words in that last sentence are guide and conceptual framework. The OSI model is a suggestion. It is not a strict set of rules that must be precisely complied with. That's why I like to show our students this highly simplified diagram of a few of the most common protocols and how they map to the seven layers of the OSI model. As you can see, there are many protocols that operate at multiple layers of the OSI model and blur the lines between layers. To say it is complicated is an understatement. And you certainly don't need to understand all these protocols to this depth of detail. I do want to highlight a very important point though. When you read different books about protocols or Google a protocol, you will quickly find conflicting answers as to which OSI layer a protocol operates at. A perfect example is ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol, which is used to translate an IP address, which operates at layer three of the OSI model, down to a MAC address, which operates at layer two, the data link layer of the OSI model. So at which layer of the OSI model does the ARP protocol operate? Both layers two and three. Here's why I'm telling you all this. You will see questions on the exam asking you which layer a specific protocol or device operates at in the OSI model. And I'm gonna give you a nice, simple answer. But recognize that this gets super complicated real fast if you dig into it and you will find conflicting answers out there. All right, the seven layers of the OSI model. You need to memorize the seven layers, and they are layer one, physical, layer two, data link, layer three, network, layer four, transport, layer five, session, layer six, presentation, and layer seven, application. And here are a couple of mnemonics to help you memorize them. Starting at the bottom, we have the classic, please do not throw sausage pizza away. Or starting from the top, we have all people seem to need data processing. I know some spicier ones, but I'm not gonna share them with you as YouTube might object. Okay, now with that introduction out of the way, let's go through each layer. And I'm gonna start at the bottom with layer one and briefly explain what is supposed to happen at each layer and the major protocols, devices, and other interesting tidbits at each layer. Layer one, the physical layer, is where the binary transmission of data across physical media occurs, electrons across wires, photons through fiber optic cables, and electromagnetic waves through the air for wireless. All different ways of moving bits. How specifically do we move bits? There are two major methods, with wires of some sort or wirelessly through the air. The types of wires you need to know a wee bit about include twisted pair, also known as ethernet cable, also known as category five, or more commonly cat five cable. And there are newer standards like cat six, cat seven, and cat eight cable. And they all use the venerable RJ45 jack. There is also coaxial cable and fiber optic cable. From a wireless perspective, there are three major ways we can send bits wirelessly that you should know about. Radio frequency, which includes Wi-Fi, infrared, or infrared, and microwave. Microwave is a good way of connecting buildings that are within line of sight, and you wanna save the cost of burying cables in the ground. Now, let's talk about how we interconnect several systems together. There are different ways we can connect the wires to create different topologies. 
The vast majority of networks that we use today are fundamentally bus topologies. Every system is connected to every other system across a wire. This is a broadcast technology. And the major issue here is collisions. If two systems try to send data across the bus at the same time, you will have a collision. And the more systems, the more collisions. This is a major problem. This brings us to tree topology, which is still fundamentally a bus topology, but we are beginning to segment the network to force signals to go down a particular branch, which helps reduce collisions. Star topology means all the systems are interconnected through a central device, like a switch. The big advantage of having a switch in the middle here is the switch can have some intelligence and can only direct packets to the intended recipient, which is a huge help in reducing collisions and increasing network throughput. Mesh topology means every device is interconnected with every other device. This is wonderful for redundancy. Full mesh networks are very rare, but partial mesh networks where critical devices are interconnected, like boundary firewalls and routers, are very common. And the final topology we will cover is the old school token ring. Token ring has the big advantage of built-in collision avoidance. A token is passed around the ring, and a system can only send data when it has the token, meaning only one system can send data at a time, no collisions. But if a system malfunctions and doesn't pass on the token, then no one gets to talk. That's one reason token ring networks are pretty rare these days. As I mentioned, the vast majority of networks that we use today are fundamentally bus topology, which has the big problem of collisions. We therefore need methods of effectively dealing with collisions. CSMA CA, carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance, as the name implies, avoids collisions and is primarily used in wireless networks. CSMA CD, Carrier sends multiple access with collision detection, on the other hand, detects if a collision has occurred and deals with it. CSMA CD is used primarily in wired networks. The major devices you should know about that operate at the physical layer are hubs, repeaters, and concentrators. These devices have no intelligence. They just repeat signals, but they do it incredibly quickly and efficiently. That is a common theme we'll see here in the OSI model. At the lowest level of the OSI model, the physical layer, there is essentially zero intelligence, zero ability to make decisions, but wicked good speed. As we move up, at each layer we gain more intelligence, at the cost of efficiency. The major protocol that you should know about at layer 1 is 802.11, which is a whole family of protocols for wireless local area networks. You will no doubt have heard of protocols such as 802.11a, 802.11b, G, N, A, C, and perhaps even the upcoming Wi-Fi 6, 802.11.ax. You need to know a wee bit about these 802.11 protocols, which I'll cover in the next mind map. Let's move on up to layer 2, the data link layer, which is responsible for the physical addressing and reliable point-to-point -point connections. It is at layer 2 that we have the very important MAC, Media Access Control Address. MAC addresses are a unique identifier assigned to every network interface controller ever manufactured. Every device that connects to a network has one of these unique MAC addresses. Layer 2 switches use MAC addresses to figure out which system to send data to. Layer 2 devices you should know about are switches and bridges. Bridges connect two physical network segments together and switches interconnect multiple devices so they can talk to each other, and switches intelligently only forward data to an intended recipient based on MAC address, greatly improving network performance over hubs. There are new, more intelligent switches that operate at layer 2 and layer 3. However, unless specifically stated, you should assume a switch operates at layer 2. And the layer 2 protocols you should know about? 802.1 X, which is used for authenticating network devices to a network. It's a protocol used for network access control. ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, which, as I mentioned in the intro, translates an IP address down to a MAC address. It's worth mentioning here there's also RARP, Reverse Address Resolution Protocol, which you can probably guess translates a MAC address up to an IP address. PPTP, 
point-to-point -point tunneling protocol is used for creating tunnels. Lots more on tunnels and VPNs in video four of domain four. PPP, point-to-point -point protocol, encapsulates internet protocol IP traffic so that it can be transmitted over analog connections and provides authentication, encryption, and compression. And authentication protocols, PAP, CHAP, and EAP, which I'll talk about in more detail in the next video. Next layer up is layer three, the network layer, and it is responsible for logical addressing, routing, and delivery of datagrams. And it is at layer three that we have the crucially important internet protocol IP addresses. IP addresses are much like your postal address. If anyone wants to mail you a letter from somewhere on the planet, they need your postal address, your country, province, or state, city, street, and house number, so that the letter can be routed to your specific mailbox. IP addresses serve the same function on networks. They identify a specific system and allow datagrams, packets, to be routed to the system across local area networks and even across the vast intertubes. Lots more on IP addresses in the next video. Layer three devices you should know about are routers and packet filtering firewalls. Routers forward packets between different network segments based on IP addresses. And packet filtering firewalls are the simplest and fastest firewalls. I'll talk a lot more about firewalls in video three of domain four. And the layer three protocols, ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol, which allows network devices to send error and control messages and enables the ping and traceout utilities that we use commonly. IPsec, Internet Protocol Security, is the bewildering suite of protocols that provide data authentication, integrity, and confidentiality. I'll talk about the components of IPsec in video four. And IGMP, Internet Group Management Protocol, which is used by hosts and adjacent routers to establish multicast group memberships. IGMP enables multicast groups, the ability to transmit the same packets to multiple systems at once. Moving on up again, we have layer four, the transport layer, which is responsible for end-to-end -end connections with error correction and detection. It is at layer four that we have ports, Different ports equate to different services that are offered by a system across a network. You can kind of think of ports as the doors in a building. If a port is open, if a door is open to a room, then you can get access to the services of that room. A door might be open to a cafeteria, to a washroom, or a bedroom. There are 65,535 ports, and I would recommend that you memorize what they are all used for. Not funny? Okay. Just remember a few of the most common ports. Port 21 is used for FTP, File Transfer Protocol. And FTP is used to transfer files between a client and a server. Port 22 is SSH, Secure Shell, used for remotely connecting to a system. Port 23 is Telnet, a remote command line protocol. Port 80 is for HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol the protocol that our web browsers use to connect to a web server, and port 443 is secure HTTP, secured using TLS, Transport Layer Security Protocol, that I'll delve into in video four. And the layer four protocols that you should know about, TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, provides reliable, ordered, and error-checked delivery of packets. UDP, User Datagram Protocol, also delivers packets and does so with great speed and efficiency at the expense of a reliable connection and error correction. Good old send and pray. TCP and UDP are very important protocols to understand. And SSL TLS, Secure Socket Layer, and its latest version, TLS, which I just mentioned a few moments ago, are used to encrypt HTTP traffic. Next up, layer five, the session layer which is responsible for inter-host communication. The lone layer five device you should know about is a circuit proxy firewall. Again, lots more on firewalls in the next video. And the layer five protocols, NetBIOS, Network Basic Input Output System, which allows applications on computers to communicate with one another over a LAN, and RPC, Remote Procedure Call, which enables a client to send a request to a remote server 
to execute a specific procedure with supplied parameters. And that brings us to layer six, the presentation layer, which is all about presentation, character conversion, codecs, compression and decompression for streaming audio and video, image conversion, formatting. That's really all you need to know about layer six. And that brings us inescapably to the upper echelon of the OSI model, layer seven, the application layer. Layer seven is where we have the greatest intelligence to make decisions. And layer seven is responsible for human computer interaction and where applications can access network services. The major device that you should recognize as a layer seven device is application firewalls. Very intelligent firewalls that can make very advanced decisions on what they allow through by performing things like deep packet inspection at the cost of a lot of latency. They're slow or they can be. And some layer seven protocols to know about. The HTTPS hypertext transfer protocol, as I mentioned, provides request response services to allow a client to request web pages from a web server. DNS domain name system used to translate easily remembered domain names like google.com into an IP address like 172.217.10.14. SSH secure shell, I already mentioned as well. SSH is used for remotely connecting to a system. SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, is a protocol for collecting data from and managing the configuration of network devices, such as routers and switches. LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, is used for accessing and maintaining distributed directory information, connecting to, accessing, modifying, and searching directories. For example, a corporate email directory. And DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, is used to assign IP addresses to devices as they are added to the network to ensure there are no duplicate IP addresses. And that is an overview of the OSI model within Domain 4, covering the most critical concepts to know for the exam. If you found this video helpful, you can hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified when we release additional videos in this mind map series, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. I will provide links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Thanks very much for watching and all the best in your studies.